Hello again. This is the second of three tutorials on how to create a, a threefold brochure. Before beginning um, to create the content in the brochure, I have created a folder and in there I've put some images that I intend to use and also a text file with the text I intend to input. The, this could be uh, from OpenOffice Writer or just a simple text editor as it is in this case either way is fine. I've also got a, a PDF version of this file. I've, I've made this file previously so I'm just, just to show you what we're aiming for it to look like. In this tutorial I'm only going to make this panel, the front panel, and the back panel, this panel. Okay, So let's open Scribus. Okay, um, I have got an existing document that I uh, created in the last tutorial that I'm going to continue with. So we could go open existing document and browse for it. Or because I've used it recently, I can go to open recent document. That's it, roll fold and open it. Okay. Again, I'm going to change the, the zoom level to 90% so that it fits nicely on my screen and there we're ready to go cover back extra one main one main two main three the correct layout for a roll fold, fold brochure um, just in case you want to make a concertina brochure here would be the alternative layout front cover extra one extra two and main one main two and the back that's for a concertina fold brochure if that's what you wanted. Okay. Alright, so I'm working on roll fold. The first thing I'm going to do is to save this with a new name so I don't mess up this file which I can use as a as a template. I'm not actually I've not actually saved this file as a template. I could have done and I will look at templates in a future lesson. For now, I'm simply going to save the file with a new name in a different location. So let's find the folder where my images are. Okay, in here, and I'm going to call it uh, University. We can see at the top here now it has a new name and the file roll fold will stay as it was unchanged. Okay. Right, time to start putting some content in. Um, we've got big text boxes here. Um, to make something like this I want a text box here, a text box here, uh, an image frame here and one, two, three. Um, black shapes, okay, black lines. Let's make something like that then. One text box for the top, another text box for the bottom, and a frame. They're all frames, really. A frame for the image. Okay. I have a text file already prepared, so I can open that. And here's my text for the heading. I always use the story editor, straight in, paste the text, apply. Now here I could start to use styles, but I'm not going to. For these two panels, I will get into styles in the next tutorial. Uh, at the moment, I've got the frame selected and not the actual text. So any changes I make will apply to all of the text inside the frame. I could double click in the frame and select individual parts if I wanted and then changes would only apply to that but actually I want to apply changes to the whole frame so click the text tab center it I want to make it a lot bigger okay something like that I want to reduce the gap between each line the line spacing more like 
that I think and what I'm going to try and do is make the individual letters grey with a black line around them so I can use this tool here uh, no, this one outline I have to hold it down to bring up this line width box increase that a little and now I have fill color is black okay but I'm going to reduce it to 50% so it will come out as a grey and I'm applying this outline button and leave that as black that's something like what I want yeah I'm going to go with that bring it down a little to leave space for our line across the top later mm. ah. often catch the wrong frame never mind okay text for the bottom frame copy text editor paste away we go text running out at the bottom at the moment yes it was easiest way is to bring the text frame back up I'm basically going to go with that I think but let's let's just change a few things I'm going to have this uh, align text justified more normal for leaflets and brochures I think if you go to this force justified it can come up a little bit strange sometimes like that you can see where even with three words on the line they force justification which is essentially ridiculous so we go for this one instead line text justified okay now um, I've got an image to put in here I can right click and choose get image or just double click works fine and select the correct image back to image scale to frame size okay that's going to be quite good I think and bring it down and I'm going to need to center this a little okay I think something like that will work and then I'm going to take a shape and I'm going to do a small black box rather than messing with line width so I'm just going to do a box he says messing it oh dear. okay I might need to zoom in a little to, to be able to do that more accurately first let's just put that back unlock the width and height relative to each other okay that's about the size I want copy paste mm -hmm. let's go back to 90% keys to just nudge that up a little same with this select and then use the arrow keys I think that's pretty good like that at the moment okay I'm gonna get onto the back page uh, if you remember what it looks like we're looking for something like this so I've got the text image image text no problem so I've got one large text box at the moment you can be the text for the bottom I want another text box at the top here somewhere. I want an image box here. I keep calling them boxes. Frames is the correct term, but I guess you can call them what you like. I could turn back on the grid if I wanted to view show grid if I want to align these a little more accurately. They're actually pretty good. I'm going to go with that and, and have the grid out of my way. So, back to the text. Okay. Just 
story editor, paste it in. Okay. Back on text, centered this time, a little bit larger, and I'm going to use this small caps option. And a little bit larger again. Something like that. Double click to select my image. As always, scale it to frame size. And see that up there. Text in the bottom. Okay, and back onto our text properties, centered again. This time making the text a little smaller, I think. And you'll notice that I am applying this to the all of the text in the frame. Now, it may be that I want this little bit at the bottom here to be larger, so I could click get into the frame, select this text only, and alter that individually. And I'm going to do that. Double click, bring up the image, scale it to the frame, center it. Again, it would be a good idea to turn back on my grid, make sure these images are centered on that. And I think that's good enough. I'm going to go in and view it as a print preview. Okay, the quality of print preview is actually quite low. You can change it, but the basic layout is there. I think I need to bring this image up a little bit with the arrow keys. And I can change my preview quality here somewhere. Du -du -du. Preview settings. Full resolution. File. Print preview. Look a lot better this time. It's still nowhere near as good as when you finally convert it to a PDF. Alright, I'm pretty happy with that for now. I could mess about with it for ages, but for this tutorial I'm going to leave it there. In the next tutorial I will add the text for the extra one and for the, the mains and really get into using styles for those. Okay, thank you for listening.